today we're looking at and talking about the JLC Reverso, why I love this watch so much, and exploring if JLC has become a bit of a one-trick pony, relying far too heavily on this model. So this is the Jeuge Le Coup Reverso Monoface in stainless steel. It has a mechanical, manual wind movement, and I like to think of it as a fidget spinner for rich people. Listen to how satisfying this is. Yes! If you're new here, hi, my name is Brittany, and on this channel we just talk about watches in a hopefully not pretentious and joyful way. I feel like this video has been long overdue for me, as I've been a lover of JLC watches pretty much since the beginning of me becoming disgustingly into watches. My husband was wearing a JLC Master Control on our wedding day, and it has always just been a brand that has spoken to me. I always say watches are the intersection and the meeting place of art, history, fashion, and engineering. And I don't think there are many brands that exemplify this as perfectly as Juju Le Coup. Looking at this reverso, so I have this model on loan from my gorgeous, fabulous friend Mark at Mark's Watches on Instagram. Go follow him, but only after you watch the entirety of this video. This reverso is about as classic reverso as you can get. This watch has a case size of 40 millimeters by 24.4 mil and a thickness of 7.6 mil. Mark has the mono face, so when you flip the watch around, there's a steel case back as opposed to other models offered by JLC with the duo face. Honestly, I think both models are cool, but my preference has always been the mono face, as I think it stays that little bit more true to the DNA of the reverso. If you are a fellow watch addict, you'll already know this, but this watch's original purpose was for playing polo. Whilst you were playing your polo game, you could flip to the stainless steel side to protect your watch, but if you needed to know the time, you could always flip it back around. I have not used the stainless steel side for any polo matches that I will also never play, but it has been great for reapplying my lipstick after lunch. Inside this watch is the manual winding Jeuge Le Coup Caliber 822A movement, giving you 42 hours of power reserve. If I had one complaint about this watch, it would be the lug spacing. It is 18 millimeters between the lugs, so it can be a bit of a trick to find straps. It's not impossible, it's just expensive to buy new ones. But oh, it's so worth it. I wish I had a dark blue 18 millimeter strap to show this on, but I don't. So this is it on my normal snoobuck strap. And I kind of like it. On the wrist, this is an absolute joy to wear. Here it is on my five and a half inch wrist and my husband's debatably sized wrist. I think it's six and a half inch and he insists it's six and three quarters. This is one of those rare watches where it looks equally good on both of us. I find most watches suit him more than me, but this is one of those fun exceptions that looks great on both of us. I've been wearing this every day for the past two weeks and I don't want to give it back. It has been such an enjoyable wear. I think there's a bit of a learning curve with smaller rectangular watches. When you're used to wearing 39 to 42 millimeter round watches, it can feel a bit scary putting on a square watch. It's an entirely different wearing experience. There's a certain amount of refinement and like this effortlessly cool feel that the Reverso gives off. Now here's a point of contention that will make people argue with me in the comment section. On the wrist, I think this watch feels more sporty than dressy. I know a lot of people see this as an out and out dress watch, and I truly can't argue with the logic. It has all the markers of a dress watch, only two hands, gorgeous guilloche, art deco inspiration, and only 30 meters of water resistance. All pretty standard dress watch stuff. But there's also this sporty edge about the Reverso that I can't shake, and I don't think this should be surprising. Its origins begin with a sports watch. When I compare it against my tank, the Reverso feels far more casual, and I know some people will completely disagree, and I look forward to the spirited debate in the comments section. But do you want to know what we won't be arguing about today? There's going to be no disagreements about this, I can feel it already. How annoying scammers are. And that's where today's fabulous video sponsor comes in, Incogni. I feel like I'm in a constant battle against scammers, spam emails, and shockingly targeted advertising. So there's these people, data brokers, and basically they just collect your information from wherever they can. Public records, the free apps you use, and they use this information to create an intrusive profile about you and then sell it to anyone who's willing to pay for it. 
This could be scammers, businesses, banks, insurance companies, even the government. Ugh. Ugh. Does this guy, does this give you guys the ick too? It feels wrong. But here's the thing. If you request these data brokers to delete your information, they have to comply, but they don't make it easy. There's a lot of money at stake for selling your personal and private information. So they make it an annoying and long and complicated process. That's where Incogni comes in. Once you're set up, their team will contact data brokers on your behalf to get your personal information removed on the databases. You just create an Incogni account, grant them the right to do the work for you, and sit back and watch them do the work. They'll even handle any objections on your behalf. You can try it yourself today. The first 100 people to use the link in my description and use code BRIT will get 60% off. There's also a 30 day money back guarantee, so there's no risk in trying it out. Thank you Incogni for sponsoring this video. Go check them out guys. And back to JLC. Is JLC becoming a bit of a one trick pony? And I say pony because it's linked to Polo. It's not that good. I'm gonna find a better way to integrate this. <laughs> I've heard a few watch geeks insinuate this before and feeling like they're becoming a one watch brand like AP and the Royal Oak. And I see where this is coming from. The Reverso is their flagship model and there's no getting around that. When I think of JLC as a brand, the first thing I think of is the Reverso. I feel like I'm the wrong person to answer this question of is JLC becoming a one trick pony? because my introduction to the brand was with the Master Control. That was the watch my husband had. That was the one he wore to our wedding. That was the first JLC I ever knew. And then as I got dragged into JLC boutiques and authorized dealers, the first watch I ever wanted from them was the Rendezvous. I just feel like I've had an atypical introduction to the brand, but I really don't think they're quite as far down this pipeline as say, AP. I think of last year for Watches and Wonders 2022, the push towards the Polaris, and even just my lived experience of my husband choosing the Master Control. The JLC I currently want the most isn't even a wristwatch, <laughs> it's the Atmos. So I'm probably the worst person to answer this question. But if I was to buy an AP from their current catalog, there is only one watch I'd personally be interested in buying, as harsh as that is to say. The code 1159. I think JLC just has their flagship watch, the Reverso, in the same way Omega has the Seamaster or Cartier has their Santos. It's their icon, but they are most definitely not a one-trick pony. I've been a bit critical of JLC and their price increases over this last year, which I stand behind, but it doesn't change the fact that I will forever have a soft spot for them. Jeje Le Coût is a brand that is so much bigger than the Reverso. JLC manufactured one of the most important movements, the Calibre 920, which powered the Patek Philippe Nautilus and the AP Royal Oak, meaning they were the movement makers for the Holy Trinity, earning themselves the nickname, the Watchmaker's Watchmaker. They've created the world's smallest movement and one of the most complicated wristwatches ever made in the Hybris Mechanica Calibre 185, sporting four faces and 11 complications. And all of this leads me to say, JLC is freaking awesome. Borrowing Mark's Reverso has just reignited my love for the brand and has convinced me that I feel like I can justify another rectangle watch in the collection. Enjoyable wear, enjoyable watch from one of the most important Maisons in horology. I feel like this is the most biased sounding review that I've ever done. I'm gonna try to find something bad to say. I just, I have nothing to complain about. If you like this video, hit that like button and come back to every single video I ever make ever. Forever. Do all those things to feed the algorithm God so people can have some sweet, sweet JLC knowledge. And um, let's thank the Pope to your patrons. Right, hello. Just wanted to say biggest thank you ever to my Pope tier patrons. All tier patrons are amazing and perfect and they've never done anything wrong ever before in their lives. It's a fact. But Pope tier patrons get an extra big thank you at the end of my video. So thank you so much, guys. Patrons, you truly keep this channel going. You keep this a viable thing for me to do. Um, so thank you so much, guys. You're amazing. 
and I hope you keep enjoying um, my channel and, and the work we do here. Okay. Bye, guys.